Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about something that we all need to think about when it comes to our own knowledge, assessing knowledge of other people, and it's something I've come to realize as a coach myself, um, is that the longer I coach as a full-time profession, the more I learn, and the more that I realize that maybe years ago, I simply did not know as much as I thought I did. And that can be a difficult thing for those of us to admit who, you know, our lives or even careers and things sometimes revolve around fitness. And it's something a lot of influencers online can't seem to be willing to admit. You know, they oftentimes think they know what they're doing because, you know, they've got some results themselves. Well, I can honestly say that, yeah, my own training and me getting to, you know, really big powerlifting numbers and stuff even well up into my 40s, you know, because you guys are going to see me squatting over 500, deadlifting over 600 and stuff here, you know, at age 45. I'm 45 years old, guys. Um, but while I have learned very, very large amounts training myself, I have probably learned a lot more working with my clients. Okay, because at this time, uh, I don't very rarely go under about 40 clients. I maintain an average of about 40 clients year-round. And I, I have been at that number for, I don't know, approximately a year, you know, roughly in that number range. And that's kind of where I cap it. I don't really like to go over 40. I start raising rates when I start getting more clients wanting to go over that. So, because I, I just don't want more clients than that, it's supply and demand. It, it's hard to give that many people your full attention. So having that many clients and running different systems and seeing all these different problems emerge and working with so many demographics of people because i have had clients ranging everywhere from late teens all the way up into their 60s all of which are trying to get stronger um, i've had extremely short clients extremely tall clients you know what do i mean by that i've had men as short as five foot four five foot three as tall as six foot six uh, those age ranges height ranges, um, probably had every ethnic group known to man, multiple clients of. Uh, I've had clients in at least 10 countries. Okay, this is an enormous, enormous pool of data to draw from. And I get so many clients with unique problems, clients with unique bone structures, unique leverages, unique injury histories, unique medical histories. Okay. When you do this, you learn and learn and learn and learn. When you're working with these people one-on-one, -on -one, observing their lifts, observing their training response, adjusting variables, learning to manage their fatigue, uh, you know, seeing how different movement patterns affect them dynamically over time. The things that you learn compared to what you learn, just, you know, hey, your self-training and reading and listening to other top coaches, uh, they're, they're almost not comparable. And I don't want to discount any of those other things because I know that I personally have learned an enormous amount training myself. I have learned an enormous amount reading and listening to, and, and in some cases getting the opportunity to speak to uh, some really, really great coaches. You know, who, who would I say are coaches who have really influenced me? I mean, I would say Louis Simmons, obviously. And to some extent, maybe Boris Shiko, Chris Duffin, Dave Tate, Matt Winning. All right, these have all been very influential men. And maybe I could even say guys like Ripito and stuff, but I wouldn't consider him a great strength and conditioning coach. He's a good general strength coach, right? Wendler's a good general strength coach, just for, you know, getting people the basics, right? They've actually got uh, really quite a bit of knowledge in those areas, right? But that's a different demographic than I mostly work with. I don't work with that many novices. You know, I have some here and there usually. But, you know, I've learned a great deal listening to these people and understanding, learning to understand what they are saying. And going back and revisiting it and applying it um, and definitely training myself I've learned a great deal about uh, injuries fatigue management and stuff coaching myself up into my 40s lifting these sort of numbers 
because it's a completely different ball game. And that's one thing I would tell people also. If you haven't coached many lifters over 40, do not presume to know how to coach masters lifters. Uh, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. If, if you've coached 25 to 30 year olds for the most part, and then you start working with masters lifters, a lot of the stuff that you use, particularly or a lot of the popular methods by IPF lifters, right? you're going to break them. You're literally going to break apart the bodies of these of your master's lifters. It's not going to work. They're not going to be lifting what I lift. They're going to be broke. Because those methods are for 20-somethings. But this is stuff that we learn over time. But realistically, learning in the trenches, coaching, is where you apply all these things. And you get to really observe them. Okay, because all this stuff is an applied science. And that's one of the things that I have learned and has been humbling to me as someone who was very well read. You know, I had a lot of lifting experience when I started YouTube. I was very well read, obviously. But I had limited coaching experience. I had just coached here and there, coached a few people here and there. I did some free coaching, then, you know, coached for a little while. You know, just a little minor part-time gig before I turned it into a serious uh, monetary thing. You know, to where it became full-time. And then when I started doing it every day, I had to learn how to apply all these concepts in a wide variety of people. Okay, it becomes a different animal. That is where you learn, and that is humbling, and that is where you continue to learn. And that's something I would say, you know, when talking with other coaches, when a coach thinks they know everything, they start really sucking as a coach, right? They start to become really bad coaches. It's when we accept how much more we have to learn, and we turn it into a nonstop process, that's when we start getting really good. And we have to be humble about it. We have to be humble about it in the sense that we know we have to keep learning. And we know that we're going to continue to get new clients and new lifters who we're going to learn new things about our craft as we go. Okay. And that's the other thing. That's why I say, you know, people will say, well, I listen to whatever influencer because they got this results, but they're 25 years old. And my reply to you is there is no way they could possibly know what they are doing at that age. It's just not possible. And I'm not trying to be mean when I say that. I'm saying that as someone who's been coaching and lifting a very, very, very long time and trying to learn from the very best as I go. And I'm still learning. There is just simply no way that they could have developed or have gained enough experience to be a really good coach at that age. It's just not possible, not a strength coach. They're going to need a lot more time. So be careful of those things when you're gaining your information from people. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.